Hi, I'm just thinking about my faith. Um, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Um, so I'm thinking about my faith. Um, if someone were to say, who helps you? Like um, they seen how I was and they see what I've overcome. Um, and I could show them who helped me. Um, the evidence of the things unseen well, that's um, the Holy Spirit, the power of God um, working in us, working through us, <laughs> the evidence of things unseen. So that's not self-righteous works because it's the power. Um, you know, they have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof from such turn away. So they have a form of godliness about them. They like um, Catholic Church. Um, I came out of the Catholic Church. Um, you know, they look holy on the outside and they get together and they do the rituals and the ceremonies and the sacraments and the Eucharist and they say their prayers and um, they say long prayer and they go to their confessions and um, go do good deeds and stuff around. Um, you know, they'll go out and, and help at soup kitchens and that. That stuff's good. Um, but but uh, with the Holy Spirit, um, what he's doing in us, um, it's a, so they're denying the power that God can change them on the inside, that that goes with the faith, the faith, um, the faith, and then, um, repentance is granted and, um, the grace, um, God gives us is the grace to be able to change. Uh, that is grace to see ourselves for what we are, um, that we're, we're filthiness and we, we we're sinners and we need a savior. We can't save ourselves. Um, and then God transforms us gives us a new mind puts his spirit in us and so the faith is a substance of things hoped for the evidence of things unseen so your walking testimony um, of the old you is dead and that's what happens in the water baptism you die to the old self you're buried with christ and you're resurrected to newness of life and now we're following jesus we're picking up our cross our persecutions and um denying ourselves and denying the flesh and walking in the spirit um, and crucifying the flesh and walking in the spirit and following Jesus because we love him. Um, that's why, you know, so, you know, Lord, hide your word in my heart that I might not sin against you when I meditate on your law day and night because the law is good. Um, so it shows us what we are and it points us to the cross. It points us to Jesus. We can't do it. We can't do it. So he delivers us out of much because he came to set the captives free. And the, we were at, we were taken by the will of Satan, um, held captive to Satan you know, and then now it's newness of life. So it's the spirit is willing. Um, so now we're serving righteousness, a slave to righteousness, um, using our members to serve godliness, um, using our speech to speak holiness, to speak the truth um, and being an example um, and a witness to these things. So when someone says like, you know, about the hope that's in me, well, look what, look what Jesus has done in me so far. Um, how he's changed me so far and delivered me from much oppression and a lot of demonic things, a lot of darkness, you know, um, and taking me away from the elements and the rudiments of the world, the conformity of the world and the pollutions of the world. So the faith being a substance of things hoped for, I hope for deliverance. I hope for freedom. I hope for liberty. I hope to, to escape this addiction. I hope to, you know, um, escape this relationship I'm in, or I hope to escape what I'm doing, the, the torments, um, that I'm bringing upon myself or maybe abusing myself or abusing others. Cause if you love your enemy, you know, you're supposed to love your neighbor as you love yourself, you know, but, but how do you, how can you do that? If you're, if you're, um, selling your neighbor drugs, or if you're, if you're sleeping with your neighbor's husband or wife, um, or you're stealing from your neighbor, um, how is that loving your neighbor? Right. So, so wouldn't God um, change us on the inside, um, give us new desires um, so we don't want to do that, um, weaken the flesh so that way we can actually um, walk in newness of life and we're not held captive to the will of Satan, the will of the flesh. Um, we're not held captive to do his will anymore. So um, flesh doesn't have dominion over us. It's not the one ruling anymore. Um, the flesh isn't ruling us. We're, we're Satan's the head and we're the tail. And every every lust that the flesh wants and the desires, and all the temptations of the flesh and the bondage of the flesh, we're walking around um, living that. Like we're a tail 
to the head of the serpent and we're just doing whatever the flesh wants us to do. You know, as long as it feels good and it makes me happy, I'm going to do it. Um, you know, if this makes me feel good, popping these pills and smoking marijuana makes me feel good. If lying makes me feel good, if lying can get me out of that, that problem, or if I can, if I can steal and, and that saves me this and I could, or, you know, the stuff, the stuff that we, you know, stuff that I used to do and the stuff that the stuff we do, that's the stuff that the natural carnal mind does, the, the human nature does. Um, it's all about yourself and um, being able to get out of things and not coming to the light, um, you know, hiding behind a, you know, a face. Um, it's, it's fake facade. It's hiding behind something where, um, you know, like you're an angel of light, really. Um, you're masquerading around looking like you're innocent. But really, you're not. You're up to no good. Your intentions, the intentions of the heart are wicked. You know, who can know the heart is desperately wicked above all things. So that's why God gives us a new heart and causes us to obey his commandments, his statutes, and his judgments. He causes us to do it with the Holy Spirit. Um, so that's kind of what I'm thinking about now. So the substance of things hoped for. So I'm hoping for freedom um, and, the, and a change because I don't want to live the way I was living, right? Um, so the evidence of things unseen. So it's evident that there's something unseen, the Holy Spirit that is working in us, and we're not doing it ourselves. It's not a self-righteous, vain show. It's not just a it's not just a circus, a show like the Catholic Church, you know. And they're just they're just wearing their long white robes, the Pharisees and the legalists, and um and it and behind closed doors, once that show is over, their heart's not changed. There's nothing different going on in there. They're still exactly who they were before. Um yeah, so he shows us what's in our heart. And just like, you know, even if you look upon somebody with lust, it's you're committing adultery in your heart. But um, the thing is, is, if I were to take that thought and entertain it and let my imaginations go wild and sit there and actually think about that and then get my flesh worked up and think about, imagine those things, that lust coming and that temptation, now put faces with it. Now I'm doing things in my mind that I shouldn't be doing. Okay, well, I'm producing a, lot, a whole lot of sin there. So Jesus is talking about. But if I do the teaching that Jesus said, take your thought captive. So the second the thought comes in, I'm not going to be imagining um, something in my mind taking place that's an imagination. And now I'm now I'm sinning in my heart. I'm going to take that imagination, cast it down, cast down imaginations, bring that thought into captivity, into the obedience of Christ. So what does God say about lusting and having vi visions of you um, doing certain things in your mind as an imagination that's going to work up your flesh right and then you might act on it in sin right and then that might not be enough um, self-gratification might not be enough and you might go rape somebody i mean do you see what's going on so jesus taught to take the thought captive the second it comes you you cast that imagination down you don't let it you don't let it turn into an action turn into a sinful thing you don't let it turn into um you love your neighbors you love yourself you don't want to you don't want to let it turn into something um, that it shouldn't turn into. And the Holy Spirit gives us power to do that. So the thief on the cross, you know, um, Jesus didn't die yet, was still under the Old Covenant, the Old Testament. So the Holy Spirit didn't come yet. Now that the Holy Spirit is here, the Holy Spirit's our helper, and he's who helps us, um, who helps us with these things. If a thought comes, we can serve righteousness now. Before we couldn't serve righteousness. We didn't have the helper. We didn't have the Holy Spirit to be able to serve righteousness. Um, now the Holy Spirit's here. Well, the Spirit's willing. We we can serve righteousness. We're not held captive to the will of Satan anymore. <laughs> Satan didn't open his prison house to let the prisoners out. But guess who did open the prison house? Jesus. And he has the keys of, of um, hell and death. Jesus. He's, he's in the realm of the spirit realm. Jesus' authority in his name. He's the author and finisher of our faith. He's the power. He's the king. Uh, he's, he's king over that realm, over heaven, earth, under the earth, in the spirit realm, the invisible world. Oh, yeah. And, and the devils tremble at his name. And um, yeah, his name's power. He has power. Yeah, he's got the keys. Like he has power. And that's how it is. So that's the kind of faith that I'm talking about. The faith that produces, you know, the grace and God grants us repentance and godly sorrow repentance, not sorrow of the world like Judas and he hung himself. That's a worldly sorrow. You want to have godly sorrow. And that's grace. God giving us that because we can't just muster it up. I can't just say, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Um, let me just believe I'm going to search the scriptures all day long and be in the Bible all day long. I believe, I believe, but nothing's changing in us. I'm just walking around saying, I believe and speaking scriptures and it's all just head knowledge. And I'm just speaking scriptures. 
but I'm not denying myself. I'm not repenting. I'm not, there's no, there's nothing, because uh, Jesus is the one in us. The Holy Spirit is in us um, and he's working through us. So, so when someone comes to us and asks us for the hope of our faith and our salvation, well, cause Hey, I'm a, I'm a, it's like, we're walking miracles, really. Um, showing, showing the, um, the image of Christ, um, the likeness of him. We're being transformed in our character and our mind and our thoughts. And it's very real because who else is transforming me? Why do I feel this way? The fruits of the spirit, peace, joy, long suffering, patience, a temperance, um, self-control, self-control is a fruit of the spirit, right? So if you got urges and you have, um, and there's no self-control there, well, yes, that's part of it. He, we grow in these things. And if we mess up, if we mess up, then we have an advocate with the Father and we can confess our sins. And he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But we have to abide in him. We don't want to go back to doing what we were doing before, right? Um, so we have to stay in him. And he's continuing to work these things out in us. He's working it out. He knows who are his, right? So um, repent or you will all likewise perish. Yeah, so um, you need to know what repent means and that it does produce the grace and and more things follow. And then the, the, the water baptism is just a death. You're buried with Christ. You died with him to the old self and then you're resurrected in newness of life. Why would it? What's wrong with doing that? Why wouldn't you want to do that? He says to do that. Go out to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth on me and is baptized shall be saved and he that believeth not is damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. You shall cast out devils. You shall speak with new tongues. You shall take up serpents. And if you drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt you. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So all these things that we're doing, yeah, you can receive the Holy Spirit before water baptism. Um, and then the Holy Spirit just led me to water baptism. <laughs> That's where the Holy Spirit led me. I had the Holy Spirit before water baptism and he led me to no one to do it, not in titles. Like I had the infant sprinkling as an infant as a, um, I didn't know what sin was. I couldn't make a decision to pick up my cross and follow Jesus. Um, I was a baby. I was a baby. I didn't know. Um, so that didn't mean anything, you know? So, so my, so me having the Holy Spirit before that, and then led me to do water baptism. Um, and now those, just, if you say, I believe, well, just like in the scriptures, he says, you know, the, those that, um, he says, have you received the, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they didn't. And they had to go be water baptized for remission of sin in Jesus' name. And then when they came out of the water, they came out prophesying and what? The signs that follow, speaking in tongues, the prayer language. Okay, it's real. Um, it's, you know, it's awesome. And um, so so if I just believe and think, well, I read, th I read this, I, I believe that Jesus died for my sins. Okay, now I have the Holy Spirit. Well, have you, re have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? That's an X. So just saying that isn't, you got to ask him for the Holy Spirit. Some people don't get it until after water baptism and some don't get it till even a little bit after that. The signs, um, I've talked to people now that have been water baptized and haven't received the, the, you know, the signs that follow yet. Um, but the Holy Ghost, you know, he leads you into all truth. Okay. And what God says is truth, like um, no lies of the truth. So if he's leading us to all truth. And we're supposed to, the two greatest commandments, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and then love your neighbor as you love yourself. Now, if you look at, I think it's the first four commandments, it's how to love God. It shows you how to love God. Have no idols before me. Don't say God's name in vain. Don't put other gods before him. Then, then the last, I think the last six is actually about how to love your neighbor, not to covet, murder, lie, um, honor your mother and father, like, like all, all those are how to love your neighbor. So really in the two commandments, it sums up the, all of the commandments. Yeah, that's pretty amazing, isn't it? Because the law is good. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. But we're not going about trying to establish our own righteousness and trying to keep all the 613 and plus Jewish laws and trying to keep all these sacraments and ordinances and, and um, the commandments on our own. It's impossible. Can't do it. Jesus did it, but then the Holy Spirit came as our helper and he convicts us. He moves us. Um, if we grieve him, he chastises those that he loves. He corrects us because he's our father. He's our correction rod. He keeps us in line, keeps us in line, gives it. We have the Holy Spirit. So now the flesh isn't so strong to where we have to obey it um, because we're not taken captive to the enemy's will to do the deeds of the flesh anymore. And that's how it goes. So uh, I hope people understand that, and I want you to meet my dog. <laughs>
Okay, I have to go. Um, take care. Jesus bless you.